Hello friends, uh, welcome to the lectures of uh, integral equation calculus of variation and its application. Uh, in uh, today's lecture we will di discuss the uh, solution of Fredholm integral equation with the symmetric kernel. So, uh, what it uh, means here uh, today we will discuss uh, this kind of problem. Uh, you, you can write it y x equal to f of x plus uh, lambda uh, a to b k of x of t your uh, y of t y of t uh, and d of t. This is uh, your Fredholm integral equation of uh, second kind. If you uh, now here if I assume that k of x t is equal to k star t comma x then we call this kernel as symmetric kernel. You can say that this k star t x is complex uh, complex conjugate of this k t x. So, if these two are equal we say that our kernel is uh, uh, symmetric or we can say that kernel is uh, complex symmetric or we can say that uh, kernel is uh, a, a Hermitian kind of uh, type. So, kernel is Hermitian type of kernel. Okay. So, here uh, we will discuss um, some properties of uh, uh, this kernel, uh, this solution of uh, this. Here if you remember uh, that if you consider the homogeneous version of this that is lambda a to b k of x t y of t d t, then we, we try to find out the solution of this homogeneous uh, Fredholm integral equation of second kind and the uh, uh, constant lambda for which we have a non-trivial solution we call uh, that constant lambda as eigenvalue of this uh, kernel kxt or eigenvalues of the Fredholm integral equation given as this and the corresponding non-trivial solution we call it uh, eigenfunction corresponding to this lambda. And if you remember uh, we have seen uh, several cases for example you have this example yx equal to say lambda 0 to 1. Uh, 3 x minus 2 and t y of t d of t. So, uh, this is one example which we have uh, discussed in the case when kernel is separable kernel. If you look at this is as an example of a separable kernel. So, here uh, uh, this is a, a type of uh, which, sat, uh, which does not satisfy this. Here for uh, uh, particularly here your uh, kernel is real then uh, for real kernel this k x, x t is equal to k t x. So, symmetricity condition is reduced to this. So, for real kernel k x t is equal to k t x implies that your kernel is symmetric kernel. So, if you look at here your k x t is 3 x minus 2 into t. So, it is uh, not your symmetric kernel you can easily see that k x t is basically what k x t is uh, 3 x minus 2 uh, t and k t x is uh, your 3 t minus 2 x and clearly they are not equal. So, it means that here uh, we have seen that this in this problem your kernel is not symmetric and if you remember we have already uh, proved that this has no eigenvalues. So, no lambda for which uh, this equation has a solution. So, it means that there are uh, possibilities that if your kernel there are kernels available such that we do not have no eigenvalues and hence no eigenfunction. But uh, this is not happening uh, when we take kernel of this kind. So, it means that symmetric kernel is very very important in the sense that here you can always find out say constant lambda for which we have uh, at least one non-trivial solution. So, you can always find out at least uh, one eigenvalue corresponding to symmetric uh, kernel. So, that is why this uh, is very very important uh, topic that uh, uh, we had we want to discuss it today is a kernel which is symmetric kernel. So, here if we start uh, then the first result which is very obvious is uh, this that if a kernel is symmetric then all its iterated kernels are also symmetric. If we remember we have already discussed the methods 
to uh, solve the uh, federal integral equation of uh, second kind, uh, one which uh, is uh, in terms of separable kernels, uh, there we have already discussed. And another uh, way to solve this is uh, your um, uh, method of uh, successive approximation. There we have uh, seen that. Uh, the concept of iterated kernel. So, if we say that if a kernel is uh, um, symmetric, then its uh, iterated kernel is also symmetric and that is not very difficult to prove. Here you can simply say that if it is uh, symmetric, it means that k x t is equal to k bar t x. Uh, by definition the iterated kernel are defined as follows. So, here if you remember the uh, iterated kernel we can define it like this k 1 x t we can denote as uh, k x t and k n x t is uh, given by this a to b k x z k n minus 1 z t d z where n is uh, from 2 3. So, here uh, we will try to prove this by mathematical induction. So, mathematical induction says that for n equal to 1 your result is uh, trivially true here k 1 x t we are defining as k x t and if we assume that the result is true for n equal to m then uh, uh, so here we are assuming that let k n x t be symmetric for n equal to m then we want to prove uh, the same for n equal to m plus 1. So, here if we remove uh, here we have assumed that m n for n equal to m the result is true means k m x t is equal to k m bar t x. So, we want to prove for k m plus 1 uh, x t. So, this we want to prove that k m plus 1 x t is equal to k bar m plus 1 t x. So, for that we simply write down the definition of k m plus 1 x t which is nothing but a to b k x z k m z t d uh, d z. Now, here uh, since um, k x z is symmetric. So, I can write this as k x z as k bar uh, z x and k m z t I can write it k m z bar uh, t z d z and uh, if you write it I can write it like this k m bar t z k bar z x d z and this I this is nothing but the uh, um, bar of complex uh, uh, conjugate of k bar m plus 1 t of x. So, here if it is true for n uh, equal to 1 and n equal to m then it is true for n equal to m plus 1. So, we have uh, so we can prove our result by mathematical induction that if your kernel is symmetric then it is all it is iterated kernel are also symmetric. This we are going to utilize uh, later on. Now, here the first thing which is very very important are uh, uh, say beginning point of the study of eigenvalues and eigenfunction is that that every symmetric kernel with a non-zero norm has at least one eigenvalues. This is kind of a license to start a license to uh, begin. So, it, it means that this is a quite lengthy proof. Uh, so, I am not do, going to discuss the proof of this, but uh, we are taking this example uh, this uh, uh, theorem without uh, proof and here we assume that whenever we have a, a homogeneous problem like this and your k x t is a, a non uh, a, a, a kernel which is symmetric and norm is uh, non zero then it always have at least one eigenvalues and uh, that implies that we have at least one uh, non trivial solution of this problem so uh, keeping this thing uh, in mind so it means that we may ha we have uh, at least one eigenvalues and at least one eigenfunction corresponding to that. Now, uh, we may have that uh, we may have more than one eigenvalues or we may have finite eigenvalues or we may have infinite eigenvalues. For example, if you remember uh, we have already discussed the kernel with uh, which is separable kernel there we have seen that we may have only uh, we, we can have only uh, finitely many uh, eigenvalues. So, uh, but if uh, your uh, kernel is not separable, then it may happen that uh, your um, kernel may have uh, infinite number of uh, eigenvalues and corresponding we may have infinite number of eigenfunction. So, now we want to discuss the properties of eigenvalues and eigenfunction and the first um, very very important properties is uh, this properties that the eigenfunction corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. So, here um, we uh, let us take uh, two eigenvalues say uh, here for uh, without loss of generality I am assuming lambda 1 lambda 2 you may take as a lambda m and lambda n. So, I am assuming that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are two uh, distinct eigenvalues. So, it means that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are not equal and uh, we also consider 
uh, that corresponding to this we have y 1 x and corresponding to lambda 2 we have y 2 x as Eigen function and then we try to show that uh, they are orthogonal to each other. So, we here what we are assuming that we are assuming that uh, we have a uh, problem of uh, with the symmetric kernel and we are assuming that suppose more than one Eigen values exist. Uh, so, if there are more than one Eigen value exists, so it means more than one Eigen functions exist. So, here we are assuming that corresponding to lambda 1 by 1 and lambda 2 by 2 are two Eigen pairs and we want to show that they are orthogonal to each other. So, if you remember by the definition of uh, Eigen pairs, we can say that um, uh, y x equal to lambda a to b k x x y of s d s uh, and here I am assuming k x s is symmetric. Now, we are assuming that these are Eigen pairs, so it means the, uh, we uh, have these two equations 6 and 7. So, y 1 x equal to lambda 1 a to b k x s y 1 s d s and y 2 x uh, is equal to lambda 2 a to b k x s y 2 s d of s. Now, here we have only these two equation and with the help of these two equation we want to show that uh, y 1 y 2 are orthogonal. So, for that you look at this question number uh, equation number 6. So, what we try to do we simply multiply by say uh, y 2 x and uh, integrate with respect to a to b. So, it means that on multiplying by y 2 x in uh, equation number 6 that is first equation. You can start with the equation number 7 no problem there is, there is no problem. The only thing is that you multiply the other. So, if you are taking 6 though you multiply by y 2 if it is equation number 7 then it is multiply by y 1 and integrate with respect to uh, x uh, from a to b. So, if you do it we have this a to b y 1 x y 2 x d of x equal to lambda 1 a to b y 2 x and this is the right hand side of equation 6. Now, here uh, let me um, uh, discuss it. So, here it is what uh, here we simply say that it is kind of double integral and one inner integral is with respect to s and uh, uh, outer integral is with respect to x here. So, here if you look at the uh, limits are finite and it is same as a b then we can interchange the order here. So, when you in interchange the order then your d s will come out and d x will come in and then y 1 s you can take it out and in uh, inside you can have a to b k of x s y 2 x d of x. Uh, let me write the same thing here. So, here we have uh, this thing a to b uh, y 1 x y 2 x d of x is equal to I'm um, lambda 1 is already there I am just multiplying by y 2 x and here it is a to b or uh, it is already k of x s y of s that is y 1 s d of s and d of x right. So, as uh, we pointed out that uh, uh, we can interchange the order. So, if we interchange the order we have a to b and a to b. Now, I am writing here d x x and d s here. So, if you look at the inner integral is with respect to x then uh, I can take this y 1 s out because y 1 s is uh, this thing uh, um, uh, independent of x. So, I can write this as uh, first of all I am taking this as inside. So, I can write it here y 2 x. So, by doing this you can take y 1 s out. So, y 1 s and here we have k of x of s y 2 x d of x s. Now, here if you remember y 2 x will satisfy what y 2 x is satisfying this property lambda 2 a to b k of x s y 2 s d of s. So, that we already know that is equation number 7 ok. So, here if we use this uh, equation number 7 then there is a small uh, problem here. The problem is this that here your uh, integral is with respect to x and here we have um, k x s. So, uh, there is a problem. So, here uh, uh, we can write this as lambda 1 and a to b y 1 s. Now, since we already assumed that we have um, this as a um, uh, symmetric kernel then uh, I can write this as uh, k uh, s x here and y 2 x here d x and d of s ok. And uh, once we have this then uh, I can write by equation number 7 this is uh, simply lambda 1 
a to b y 1 s and this is nothing but y 2 s here if you uh, present uh, this is uh, inner one is uh, s and outer one is x. So, by suitably change of uh, say variables here you can say that this is nothing but your y of s. So, y 2 of s and uh, this is what divided by lambda 2. So, here lambda 2 is divided. So, lambda 2 and this is what d of s. For uh, if you look at here I have assumed only this thing that uh, uh, k of x s is equal to k s of s k of s x. So, here I am assuming uh, this uh, theorem for real symmetry kernel. If you look at here we are assuming that uh, this kernel k x t is a real uh, symmetry that is why I am using here the symmetry of k x s as k x s as k s x is it ok. So, here when we do this then uh, it is what it is simply lambda 1 divided by lambda 2 a to b y 1 s and y 2 s d of s m. So, now you uh, and th th which is equal to what and this is uh, for what a to b y 1 x and y 2 x d of x. So, here x is a kind of dummy variable. Uh, uh, so, you can write it and you can take it one side and you can write it here that 1 minus lambda 1 divided by lambda 2 and we have uh, a to b y 1 x y 2 x d of x is equal to 0. For the uh, for this uh, step you please remember that uh, we are assuming that lambda 2 is uh, neighbor 0 and uh, why it is uh, neighbor 0 if you look at here this lambda 2 if it is 0 then we have only a trivial solution. So, this implies that uh, uh, that 0 Eigen value cannot happen. So, whenever we have Friedman integral equation of this kind then uh, 0 cannot be an Eigen value. So, it means that uh, this division is uh, always possible. So, now here uh, I am assuming this is nothing but uh, lambda uh, uh, this lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2. So, this factor is simply non uh, 0. So, it means that we should have a to b y 1 x y 2 x dx is equal to 0 is it ok. So, here we can say that this implies that a to b y 1 x and y 2 x d of x is equal to 0 which says that your y 1 and y 2 are uh, Eigen value uh, Eigen function which are orthogonal to each other and uh, uh, this implies that uh, the corresponding to distinct Eigen values we have uh, uh, orthogonal uh, uh, Eigen functions ok. Now, here uh, uh, we may consider that here we have proved only for a real case, but if it is not a real case then uh, uh, we can also discuss the thing for uh, um, uh, complex case also, but here we are uh, discussing only for uh, real case is it ok. So, if you look at the uh, next result, so uh, this is what we have just proved uh, that uh, since lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 we have only this and that implies that Eigen function corresponding to distinct Eigen values or orthogonal to each other. Now, uh, from here only we can say that the Eigen values of Friedman integral equation with the real symmetric kernels are all real. So, it means that uh, whatever Eigen values we are considering for uh, a symmetric kernel they are all real. So, for that let us say uh, here again I am assuming uh, that uh, lambda 1 is the Eigen value you can assume any arbitrary uh, Eigen value as well. So, let us I am assuming that uh, lambda 1 be the imaginary Eigen value corresponding to a complex Eigen function y 1 x. So, it means that so here we have y 1 x equal to lambda 1 y 1 x and we want to show that uh, uh, this is uh, when uh, this kernel is real symmetric kernel then uh, this lambda 1 has to be uh, real. So, for that let us take the uh, complex uh, uh, bar uh, complex conjugate of this. So, we simply say y 1 bar x equal to lambda 1 bar a to b and k bar x of s and y 1 bar s d of s. Now, he here we have assumed that uh, kernel is real symmetric. So, in that case it is nothing but uh, uh, k bar. So, this is what k bar x s is uh, simply you can write it it is k of s x 
and I, this I can write as uh, uh, by symmetricity I can write it this as k of x of s is it okay. So, here we can say that this uh, if lambda 1 is uh, Eigen by Lucas pointing to y 1 then lambda 1 bar is a uh, Eigen by Lucas pointing to this y 1 bar is it okay. So, that we have pointed out here that if lambda 1 y 1 is an Eigen pair Eigen pair means uh, lambda 1 is Eigen value and y 1 is Eigen function. So, if lambda 1 y 1 is Eigen pair so is uh, lambda 1 bar and y 1 bar. So, using this if you uh, proceed uh, like uh, if you look at the equation, uh, equation number 8 here I am assuming uh, lambda 2 as uh, lambda 1 bar. So, y 2 e will be will also be represented by y 1 bar. So, if you look at here we have this lambda 1 minus lambda 1 and this is a I am using equation number 8 this equation. So, if you use this equation then we have lambda 1 minus lambda 1 bar a to b y 1 x y 1 bar x dx equal to 0. So, here now we assume that suppose lambda 1 is complex it means that it has real part and imaginary part alpha 1 plus psi beta 1 and y 1 uh, corresponding Eigen function is also uh, say uh, uh, complex Eigen function. So, this also it is written as f 1 x plus i g 1 x. If you use this and put it in equation number 9 then uh, lambda 1 minus lambda number 1 bar is 2 i beta 1 into a to b f 1 square plus g 1 square d of x equal to 0. Now, here uh, since uh, we know that y 1 x cannot be 0. In fact, Eigen function means it is non 0 Eigen function. So, it means that this is nothing but uh, uh, modulus of uh, y 1 x y 1 x square. So, this cannot be 0. So, the only this um, uh, equation implies that beta 1 has to be 0. So, this implies that uh, that lambda 1 uh, has no um, imaginary part. So, it means that lambda 1 has to be your uh, real Eigen value. So, it means that we can say that the Eigen values of a Fredholm integral equation with a real symmetric kernel are all real. So, if you look at uh, the previous theorem which we have discussed this uh, implies that if we have uh, Eigen function corresponding to distinct Eigen values are orthogonal to each other. If we do not have symmetric kernel then this may not be true forget about uh, having um, Eigen function we may not have even Eigen function. So, all these uh, results are true only when we have a symmetric kernel. So, here also we can say that uh, Eigen values of a Fredholm integral equation with the real symmetric kernels are all real. If we do not have real symmetric matrix we may have uh, Eigen values which are uh, not real it may happen that we have a complex Eigen values ok. So, now let us uh, move to Nick's uh, result which says that the multiplicity of any non-zero Eigen value is finite for every symmetric kernel for which this quantity is finite or if you look at what it means what it means by multiplicity. Uh, what we have seen is that we have Eigen value and we have a Eigen function. Now, it may happen that uh, corresponding to one Eigen value we may have more than one Eigen functions. So, uh, then what we can say that we consider the linearly independent Eigen function corresponding to a particular Eigen value. So, the number of linearly independent Eigen function corresponding to one Eigen value we call this as uh, multiplicity uh, uh, of this Eigen value. Uh, let me show it here. So, suppose we have say uh, lambda and corresponding to this we have say y 1 lambda y 2 lambda and so on say y k lambda all these are uh, L i Eigen functions. So, in this case we simply say that uh, multiplicity of lambda is your uh, the number k. So, here we say that multiplicity of lambda is so uh, multiplicity of lambda is k is that ok. So, that is number of linearly independent Eigen function corresponding to this lambda. So, uh, this theorem say, uh, 5 says that um, uh, if we have uh, non zero Eigen values which is always uh, true here then uh, for every symmetric kernel for which this quantity is finite if you look at this quantity is finite uh, for every kernel which is L 2 kernel. So, for L 2 kernel uh, we want to show that the multiplicity has to be finite it cannot be say infinite. So, corresponding to one Eigen value we cannot have uh, infinite um, 
um, Eigen functions in finding linearly independent Eigen function. So, for that uh, let us uh, try to prove this. So, here let us assume that we have uh, say um, uh, phi 1 x phi 2 uh, phi 1 lambda x phi 2 lambda x and the, these uh, are be the Li Eigen functions. Uh, which correspond a non-zero eigenvalues lambda. So, he, here it is we have eigenfunctions not uh, eigenfunction. So, corresponding to a non-zero eigenvalue lambda. So, uh, now I hope you remember uh, the uh, gram symmet uh, procedure. So, what is gram symmet procedure? Uh, gram symmet procedure is to we given any uh, say n uh, number of eigenfunctions, uh, n number of functions you can always uh, uh, say generate um, a new set having equal number of um, functions, but with the new property that they are um, orthonormal to each other. Orthonormal to each other means first of all uh, if I look at this uh, say phi 1 x to say phi n x. So, suppose in the beginning we have this set, then you can always uh, construct a new um, set with equal number of say. Um, uh, functions, but with the property that norm of psi 1 uh, psi i is basically 1 and that in the interval like right now I am uh, assuming the interval is between a to b that uh, psi i uh, x psi j x dx is simply 0. Now, if, if uh, we are assuming real then it is this, if it is complex then we are considering this. So, here uh, we are studying only say real case. So, I am um, just assume that they are orthogonal to each other means this that a to b psi i x psi j x d x equal to 0. So, this procedure uh, is done uh, known as gram symmet. And uh, I think this we have done if you want we can uh, discuss I think this is uh, you can recall it like this that your psi 1 is uh, nothing but you can take it phi 1 x divided by norm of phi 1 x and uh, psi 2. So, psi 1 x is this psi 2 x is basically what psi 2 x uh, 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 you can take it uh, psi 2 x as um, phi 2 x minus your um, um, phi 2 x psi 1 x in a product of this and here you take it your uh, um, this is uh, psi 1 x ok. Divided by the norm of this Okay, so, what will be whatever it so here uh, we are defining this inner product as uh, say f and g as this a to b f x g of x d of x. Here I am defining this as a real uh, inner product, otherwise, uh, in complex case, it is like this. Okay. So, uh, this we can so basically what we are doing we are taking out the part which is in, uh, in the direction of psi 1. So, this we can do it for uh, any n number of this psi m x is equal to your phi m x minus summation i equal to 1 to say m minus 1 and we are just taking out uh, say phi m x and uh, phi i x and uh, your psi i x and divided by the norm of this whatever be the norm of this. So, you can uh, write it psi m x uh, as new set which are uh, having the property that uh, uh, their norm is 1 and they are orthogonal to each other. So, we call it uh, orthonormal set and this procedure is known as gram symmet orth uh, uh, orthogonalization process orthonormalization process. So, here uh, we are assuming that um, that we have uh, uh, function phi 1 lambda x phi 2 lambda x phi n lambda x be the L uh, Li Eigen function which corresponding non zero Eigen value lambda. So, using this procedure um, we uh, can find linear combination of these function which form an orthonormal system u k lambda. So, here we already uh, considering that we are uh, worrying about only say corresponding orthonormal Eigen functions. So, here 
Now let us say that uh, if this is orthonormal then the, the corresponding conjugate system uk lambda bar is also an orthonormal system. So let us consider uh, that uh, approximation of kxt by these uh, orthonormal uh, conjugate system complex conjugate system. So let us say that kxt is approximated by this summation ai ui lambda t bar where ai is the uh, Fourier coefficient, uh, Fourier, uh, coefficient corresponding to this kernel kxt and it is given by this ai uh, equal to a to b kxt ui lambda uh, t dt. Now if you look at uh, since ui lambda t is the eigenfunction corresponding to kxt uh, with the eigenvalue lambda. So this I can write it what this I can write it um, uh, ui lambda divided by lambda. So the ai is that nothing but lambda inverse ui lambda x. So in this case when kxt is approximated by this linear combination where ai is the Fourier coefficient given by this then um, uh, since ui lambda is uh, eigenfunctions we can write it ai as lambda inverse ui lambda x. So using this I can write it. Um, uh, uh, that uh, uh, now we can use uh, Bessel's inequality and we can write it like this. Now what is uh, Bessel's inequality? If we recall let me write it here. So Bessel's inequality means uh, you take any function psi of x and uh, let us say that phi 1 x to say phi n x are uh, simply uh, n l i orthonormal uh, uh, functions right then uh, you can say that you can always approximate this psi of x um, by summation ai your phi i of x where ai i am assuming as um, uh, the limit I am assuming a to be here uh, psi of x your phi i x d of x. So this uh, I am writing here then uh, you can always uh, say that psi of x a square is uh, greater than or equal to uh, this is what summation of i square i is equal to in this particular case it is 1 to n so 1 to n so this is uh, the uh, inequality which is known as uh, Bichel's inequality uh, this is uh, this we can uh, get it in any function analysis book or any uh, for example uh, here we are using the book uh, linear integral equation uh, uh, theory and examples by R P Kamal. So you can get uh, uh, the proof of this, this is known as um, your uh, Bichel's inequality. So we keep on using this okay. So now here uh, I am assuming psi of x as k of x t. So here we are writing k x t as uh, this uh, a i u i bar lambda t here a i is this uh, Fourier coefficient. So we can apply our uh, Bichel's inequality on this expression and we can say that a to b uh, modulus of kxt uh, square dt is greater than this quantity. Here your uh, ai is basically ai is what? ai is uh, lambda inverse ui lambda x. So using this I can write 1 upon lambda square ui lambda x whole a square. So this is by basis inequality. Now what we try to do we just integrate with respect to x. Uh, uh, so we have a to b. Uh, 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 this a to b kx uh, t square dx dt uh, equal to this. Now here if we integrate this a to b uh, uh, modulus of u i lambda x whole square dx this is nothing but uh, 1 because we have already assumed that it is normalized then we have only this. Now if I, uh, I is basically uh, representing what? I representing the multiplicity of this. So if uh, multiplicity say m then we have this. Uh, that this quantity is greater than or equal to m by lambda I square. Now we already assume that uh, k is uh, L2 kernel or for which this is uh, finite then this m cannot be infinite. So it means that the multiplicity m cannot be infinite okay. So uh, that is a result which we uh, want to prove that is that the multiplicity of any non-zero eigenvalue is finite for every symmetric kernel for which a to b for which uh, this quantity is finite or you can say the for which uh, this kernel is a L2 kernel. So in next uh, lecture we will discuss some more properties of this and then uh, uh, some more properties of eigenvalues and eigenfunction and then uh, we will try to have a uh, solution method to solve uh, Fredo integral equation of uh, uh, symmetric kernel.
we want to see that okay thank you for listening us thank you